allow me to take the opportunity to adequately convey just how happy I am that that happened. <clears throat> Yay. Now, ordinarily, when I hit certain milestones, I take the opportunity to shill various channels. I'm only going to do one, and it's always going to be this one. Because had I not been introduced to this channel, and the podcast I went on semi-regularly when I started, I would not have met the creators I met. I would not have committed as much as I did to YouTube, or have done, and will continue to do so. So please consider subscribing to Red Robot. Now, today, we are going to cover things not to say to the homeless. I don't take issue with those who are homeless. Many, possibly the majority, are put in an impossible position. I myself have been there, and can empathise with it. So it is not going to be that so much that I take issue with with this video, because a lot of it isn't actually that bad. The humour as well, I don't take issue with it. But certain messages in it, I do take issue with, and I think they are worth addressing. Crackhead! Love it. <laughs> it's always a passing comment. You never get to reply to the crackhead answer, do you know what I mean? They don't stand there and go, crackhead, and then wait for your reply back. I have heard this one said, so I can't dismiss it. My belief, though, is those that say it generally aren't better than you. They think they are, but honestly, the fact they've even considered engaging you in conversations done because all they want to do is make themselves feel better. Because they're that hollow. Labeling someone as a crackhead is just your way of closing off that person's pain. Mm. This one isn't entirely true, as it is mostly generalised. That said, I'm not seeking to dismiss what you have experienced, but having seen people call those names to see those same people then approach other people at cash machines withdrawing money, to then, and air quote this, go and make a phone call, only to disappear into a nearest Tesco and buy a stack of cider, does raise questions about the legitimacy of some people's coping mechanism, which I'm not denigrating. Some people have struggles when it comes to handling the circumstances they are put in, or dealing with the hand they have been dealt. There is no help out there for anyone that is drinking or doing drugs. That is somewhat true. There are some resources, but they are few and far between, and those resources are stretched very thin. That is not exclusive to those who are homeless, but there is an odd prevalence to it within the homeless. Do you remember when I earlier said a coping mechanism? I often believe dealing with homelessness or coping with it pushes some in the direction of drugs and alcohol as a way to take their mind off it. Pretend not to see you. That is the one that just makes you feel like you don't exist. This one does make me feel a bit sad, in the sense that we've gotten to a stage in society where I was a kid, people all talked to each other. You saw each other in the street, you saw your neighbours, you went over and said hello and caught up. Now though, everyone's looking at their phones Everyone has earphones in, or headphones on, or airpods up their bottom. Nobody engages in conversation unless it's via a phone. I see people selling big issues being given the widest berth. Those who are sat in a sleeping bag by the side being chastised or ignored openly. Because there are shops now that have window signs saying it is illegal to beg, which I don't support in the slightest. I think if someone needs help, you give them help. I'm going to share a little story of an incident that happened with me. I went to go to work, and in the shop doorway next to the place I went, there was a man. He was sat there, and he said hello. So I sparked a conversation. I was interested. We talked for a good hour. I then realised I was going to go into the bakery to do the cleaning like I normally do, and thought, if they have any spare food, I'm going to come back and give it to him. So I did, because that's what you're meant to do to help other people that need help. From engaging in that conversation, I realised he wasn't a drug user, he wasn't an alcoholic, he was an abandoned veteran who deserved my respect. I have since gone fishing with that man several times, and he did eventually manage to get a job. He worked his way out of it, from the good graces of people that actually went by and said hello to him. Those people that ignore you and make you feel like you don't exist aren't people worth knowing. Humanity as a whole is an incredibly judgy species. I don't like that. In 2020, I'm going to erase it when I erase all of you. They don't want to care. They don't want to Thing know. Is. It's easier for them to look at you and judge you rather than it is to learn about who you are. Exactly. Which is why many people don't do it. Because they'd rather look at their phone than talk to a stranger. Which is a loss on their part. For all they know, they could actually make a really good friend or do something good like help. 
I should now state this is one of the few videos where I don't want to attack anyone because I actually empathize quite a lot with those involved in this video. At least you're not on the street. You don't have to be in the street to be homeless. Homeless is sofa surfing, overcrowding, not being being evicted. You still have the same anxiety about it. Like you don't you have no permanent residence. Has anyone noticed that in all the previous things not to say to videos, this is the nearest we get to having legitimate explanations for reasons why you really shouldn't be saying these things to people in situations. Previous ones just focused on getting offended. These people who have been through the ringer are able to give coherent reasons and explanations, but they're not getting the one thing they truly deserve, and that is a fair chance. Which to me is a damning statement for the quality of the product the BBC put out with these videos. Did you go to school? Did you go to school? Yeah, this one's inherently stupid for many, many reasons. The first being that the majority of people in this country, I would argue somewhere very close to 100% in fact, go to school. It is a bit of a fallacy to think that because someone has gone to school, that they are not able to be homeless. It's the idea that once educated, you are immediately going to be successful. Let's take that logic and apply it to somebody we all know, me. I am, for the most part, considered to be highly educated. And yet, for a living, I am self-employed as a cleaner and a content creator on YouTube. My degree has nothing to do with either. How educated one person is, is not a measure of one's success or ability to be successful or mean that you could become successful because you're educated. Nor does it indicate the likelihood of whether or not you'll ever fail or become homeless. Let me tell you something as well. Yeah. That. Can you imagine going to school while being homeless? Yeah, kids are far worse than adults. Kids are savages. Kids are monsters. People should stop having kids. We would resolve all these problems if there were no more children. Thank you. Okay, in all seriousness, it is obviously a different challenge for a child to experience. One that I would not want or wish for any child to go through. It is unfortunate that it does happen, and it would be really nice if governments did more, our government especially in the UK, to deal with homelessness in our country. Austerity has not helped this. Obviously, it's exacerbated the conditions that we have gone through as a country, and I'm not going to try and make excuses for why this had to happen. Everyone knows why it had to happen. And quite frankly, that's a discussion for another time to be repeated again another time. Get a job. I'm not going to waste my time playing their answers to this, because this one doesn't just affect homeless people. You, the BBC have lucked out into having someone respond to you that spent eight years of their 17 adult years unemployed. Getting a job is not easy. It doesn't matter if you have a roof over your head. Of course, there are obstacles that make it incredibly difficult if you're homeless, because many don't do cash in hand job anymore. You have to have a roof over your head, a bank account, which some people don't get because they don't have a roof over their head. And shelters sometimes don't count in this instance either. With this particular case, I don't quite understand why there is no ability for companies to hire people that don't have a permanent place of residence or be able to pay them by cash. Now, I do understand that there could be an argument made for whether or not the person is a legal British citizen and therefore, or subject even, and therefore because we can't prove where they live, we can't prove who they are. That is one of the most irritating consequences of having to clamp down on identity fraud, one I hope we are able to breach at some point with something that could repair that to allow people to be trusted. I'm not suggesting those ID cards, but I know they've been touted as a possible way out. However, if you're homeless, what good are they? Just because I'm going to end the video here, I should point out there are more questions that are asked, but upon hearing the answers, they became less about legitimate answers, in the sense that those answers that were reasonable and gave really good concise explanations for circumstances were few and far between, to be replaced more by people getting a bit more indignant and impatient. I don't want to show those, because I wanted to show the best possible characteristics from these people who deserve a better chance. Perhaps BBC going forward, you should do more videos like this, because those types of videos highlight some rather interesting biases, prejudices people hold against those who are homeless or have been homeless. 
I'm still going to respond to other videos you've done because there are so many that are absolute rubbish. But we'll get to that soon enough.